So as I've said a few times, we've been in a series with, with nine other congregations. It's bigger than us. It's broader than us, um, both geographically and in terms of, of numbers. I believe at the very beginning of the series, we said that these uh, 10 or so Lutheran churches in the area that we're partnered with represent over 8,000 um, members in the St. Louis area. And so we're all, we're all preaching and, and hearing a similar message. And today we conclude that message um, with uh, another, another challenge. So last week we talked about persecution and hardship and suffering, and we talked about what's the Christian response in persecution and in suffering, because it is different than the world's response to it. The world can see um, hardship and, uh, and challenge and, and suffering and certainly persecution um, in, a, in a particular way. They can see it as failure. Um, they could see it as, as punishment. Uh, but we are called as Christians to, to view it in a different way. And so today we're going to talk about something that's also challenging, and that challenge is this, sending, sending. We, we live by two words here, loved and sent. It's right there on our, on our banners. Uh, those are words that we talk a lot about, but sending can be difficult. Sending can be challenging. Send, sending can be, can be painful because whenever you send, you're leaving something behind. Whenever you send, you're, you're sacrificing something in, in order to go. But that's precisely what the Holy Spirit often calls us to do, is to go, to go. And that oftentimes entails a, a sacrifice and it means that there is, a, there is something that we leave behind in order to go. We see that really clear in the church in Antioch, which again, a church in the Mediterranean 2,000 years ago, but it actually has a whole lot to do with us today here, and I hope that, that you see that this morning. I have a little, little map of Antioch, maybe. There we go. There we go. I love technology. Um, Antioch is, in the, is the northeast corner of the Mediterranean. So that, that sea there, that's the Mediterranean Sea. It's the northeast corner of the Mediterranean Sea. And it was about 18 miles from the sea, and it was right on a river. And it was a, a major, major city of, of commerce. It was a crossroads. And it was at the time of Jesus. So at the time that, that we're talking about it in Acts, it was the third largest city in the entire Roman Empire. The third largest city in the entire Roman Empire. Only behind Rome itself. Only behind Rome itself and, I want to check my notes, I want to make sure I, I get this correct, and Alexandria in Egypt. Those are the only two cities in the Roman Empire at the time that were larger than Antioch. And it was a, it was a diverse city. It was a cosmopolitan city. It was a major uh, thoroughfare. It was a major start, stopping point on the Silk Route because, like I said, it had, it had access to the sea through the river, again, only 18 miles to the sea. But then it also was, a, was kind of the, the gateway into the, the desert region as it, as it spread to the east. And so it was, a, it was a big, bustling city. And it was in this big, bustling city that we are told that the, the Christian church grew it kind of became the, the missionary headquarters for the early church. So if the headquarters of the church was Jerusalem, Antioch was the, was the missionary headquarters uh, for the church. And it was called the, the cradle of Christianity. The cradle of Christianity. We just read that in Antioch, it was where the disciples, it's where the, the followers of Jesus Christ were first given this name Christians, which really means belonging to Christ. And sometimes that wasn't used in a, in a, good, a good way but it's where we, we first get the term Christians. Um, a, a growing diversity of Christians, too, we see in our text from this morning as well that it wasn't simply uh, the Jews that were coming to Christ, but it was also Hellenists, which means Greeks, and Gentiles, it means those who were not a part of the, the family of God. The family of God was expanding in diversity of race and in, in, in class and in culture. It wasn't simply for a, a narrow set of people, but it was, it was for everyone. And we, saw that, we see that diversity here in the church in Antioch. And it really was the central hub for Paul's missionary journeys. If you've ever um, looked at a map in your Bible or, or online of Paul's missionary journeys, it kind of looks like a bunch of spaghetti strings um, going out. The hub for that was, was Antioch. Antioch was, was kind of the, the linchpin for that. And the church in Antioch really had a, a spirit of selfless sending because it takes selflessness in order to send. And the church in, in Antioch embraced that. 
Um, so much so that there's a, there's a story told about the church in Antioch that parents, when they, had, when they had children, so Christian parents, followers of Jesus, followers of the way, when they, would, when they would have children, they would raise up their children with a mindset that they would be sent, that they would be missionaries. And the story goes that these families, when, when their children were, were grown up, when their children were older, they would take them down to, to the sea. I'll go back to the... They would take them down to the sea, and they would stand at the port, and their children would, would go out and set sail and go to different parts of the known world at the time with the, the message of the gospel on their, on their tongues and on their mouth. And it would be, a, it would be a, a difficult scene. It would be a painful scene. There would be crying because they're leaving something behind in, in order to go. But for Jesus, they would do it. They wouldn't do it for anything else. They wouldn't do it for anything else. They wouldn't do it for any of the, the other pagan deities that were around them at the time. But for Christ, for the message of the gospel, they would do it. And so parents had this, this mentality that we raise our children to be missionaries and we, we send them. We send them. Uh, there's, a, there's a quote from John Shedd that says, a ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. A ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. The quote reminds me of the, the spirit that, that Antioch had, this, this spirit of, of selfless sending, that there's a, there's a time to be in the harbor, but there's also a, a time to set sail and to go and to be sent. There's a, there's a purpose for a ship, and a purpose for a ship isn't to stay anchored in the harbor, but it's to, to be out there on the ocean setting sail. So last week we talked about persecution, and one of the, the challenges of the American church is that, to continue with the metaphor, we get stuck in the harbor. We get stuck in the harbor. We thank God that there is not persecution here, and we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted for their faith and who really face really grave danger and challenges and suffering for their faith. But I wonder if, because we are, we're safe here, we're, we're comfortable here, have we lost some of that spirit of selfless sending in our church today? It's easy to be in the harbor. The food is good. You get to sleep in a comfortable bed. You don't have to go out and battle the wind and the waves on the sea. The harbor is good and it's safe. And there's a time for the harbor, but there's also a time to be out on the sea because that's what a ship is meant to do. And the church, the church is meant to be in mission. The church is, is meant to be sent, not simply gathered, but gathered and scattered. Coming together in worship, coming together to, to be the, the community and the family of God, but then also to be, to be sent. I think oftentimes we resist, we resist hardship and we resist suffering, and that's natural. But God calls us to, to something higher often, and that's to, to enter into the wind and the waves that are on the sea and to go out and to be sent to those who need to hear this message. And I pray that the Lord would continue to grant us that spirit of Antioch, that spirit of, of selfless sending. And I see that, that spirit I see that spirit in some of you here. I see it in Terry and in Ken and Gail, who have, have been here now for years and years and years, sent from Christ Memorial to help with this little young adult group that was started in Pastor Jeff's backyard and moved to St. Stephen's and moved to the Grand Ole Theater and then moved here. I see it in you. I see it in you. I see it in uh, Barrett Grabing. You guys remember Barrett Grabing? He was our vicar for a year. For those of you that have been with us for a long time, uh, many of you, Barrett predates you. Uh, but he was our, our vicar for a time, and he was a, a field worker here from seminary. And we sent him to, to Austin, and he planted a church in Austin. And he planted a church with, with two words that they were driven by, loved and sent. And he went and he, he ministered to the, to the people in Austin, and he planted a, a church. He started a church that wasn't there before. And now he, he serves at a, at a multi-site, not unlike ours here at Reliant in Fort Worth. He was sent, and it was difficult, and it was challenging. I would have liked to have kept Barrett here. 
Really, I would have liked to have kept Krista here. Krista was great. <laughs> Barrett was okay. <laughs> but I see it in you. I see that spirit of, of selfless sending. I see that, that spirit of, of even if it hurts, even if it's painful, even if it requires sacrifice, even if it means leaving something behind, that you, you go. You go. I see it in you. I see it in this place Monday through Friday as, as we're sent um, into a, a coffee house ministry that we now, we now run and we've, we've taken over operations of that three years ago. And I see it in conversations with, with customers beyond a transaction, beyond a business transaction, buying a cup of coffee or a scone. But I see real life conversations that happen. I see people come into this place and they experience the peace that surpasses our understanding, a, a peace that comes from, from Jesus. And they ask questions, and I see people come to know the Prince of Peace even in the midst of this place. I see it in you. So we're in a season here at Reliant where we're, we're asking the question, where is God sending us to next? And sometimes those, those questions are scary because it means that it's time to not be safe in the harbor anymore, but it's time to, to set sail. It's time to send. It's time to go. It's time to, to unanchor from the shore and to go out onto the waves and the wind of the sea. And that could be scary. But I believe God is calling us to something new and the next thing. What if God is calling us to continue to, to gather in this space, but not so that we can grow, not so that we can have more and more and more people in this space, but so that we can send. There's a lot of churches in our St. Louis area. There's a lot of churches in our St. Louis area, and there's a lot of churches in our St. Louis area that are, that are struggling. There's a lot of churches that are hurting. There's a, a lot of churches that, that have a place, but they don't have a people. What if, we, what if we grew here so that we could send out there? What if we gathered in this place specifically so that we could send people out to other places? Other places like Emmaus Lutheran on South Jefferson, or Mount Olive over in Shaw, or St. Trinity down in the Patch. What if we took the Antioch mindset and said, I'm going to be in this place for a season so that I can go out and love and to serve in other places. And as we, we wrestle with those questions, we, we look to churches like Antioch, a church 2,000 years ago in a place halfway around the world that we maybe seemingly don't have anything to do with. We have nothing in common with them, but actually we have a lot in common with them. The Lord is doing the, the same thing. The Lord is sending. The Lord is is calling us to, to go out. The Lord is saying, it's time to, to untether from the harbor and to go out and to spread and to share this gospel and to love others with this exact same message. What if we took that mentality as we ask questions of what is God calling us to next? So the question is, where do we get this spirit of selfless sending from? Well, even if you haven't grown up in the church, you, you probably know the most famous Bible verse of all. Even if you've just watched sporting events, you see signs with this. Let's read these words together from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. God sent His Son. He sent His Son into the world on a, on a rescue mission that no one else could accomplish. He sent Him into the wind and the waves of the sea of this life that we experience. The sea in, in Scripture is always chaos. It's always out of our control. It's always trouble and turmoil. 
And that's exactly what Jesus entered into. He entered into our sea of trouble and turmoil and chaos. And he came and, and he pulled us up out of the waters and he rescued us and he redeemed us with his own life. Where does the church in Antioch 2,000 years ago and the church today in St. Louis, where do we get our spirit of selfless sending? We get it from Christ because he was the first one who was sent for us. God the Father didn't withhold his son from us, but he, he sent him into the world. And he sent him on a rescue mission for each and every one of us. He has called you into his family. You are his. The harbor was easier. The sea is, is wild and wicked. It's chaotic. But Jesus went, and he came on the rescue mission for you and for me to die the ultimate death that brings us life. And so we serve and are loved by a God of selfless sending. And it's in that security, it's in that harbor of His love and His grace and His mercy that we'll never let go, no matter what we face, no matter what storms in life we face, no matter what waves and wind come upon us, it's in the safe harbor of His love and His grace that we are able to set out and we are able to go and to be sent into places maybe that we normally would not go ourselves. But if Jesus sends, we will go. We will go. So may we continue to have the, the spirit of Antioch, the spirit of selfless sending, and ask the question, will you go? Where is God sending you? He has loved you deeply in His Son, Jesus Christ. And now He sends you with great purpose and great power and with a great message upon your lips and upon your heart that God so loved the world that you, you are rescued and redeemed in Him. May we take that spirit with us wherever we go. Will you go? Amen.